back, motherfuckers. You know, it's almost like you guys don't have faith in me. Doing all right now? Feel a little bit better? Good meal last time we got together? You know, got together right here. Today we're making meatloaf, as promised. But we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to give you a little bit of history on the meatloaf. I looked this up, man. There are YouTube channels completely dedicated to the history of meatloaf. So now I'm really excited. Did my research, and uh, we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. It's not going to be your normal meatloaf that you think it is. But it's going to be your normal meatloaf that you don't think it is. So let's get to work. Meatloaf. It's almost dinner time. Ring the bell. Subscribe. Like. Tell your friends. Comment below. Do your thing while I do my thing. It's almost dinner time. We're going to start with the small stuff. Um, I have definitely shown you how to dice up an onion, so we're going to have some fun with that. But I have yet to show you the scallion. Now, the outside skin on any onion is called a tunic, which I also believe is like a hat, like a Yiddish or something, a Yiddish or a tunic. Is there a tunic? Is there like a... No? Am I wrong? Am I being racist right now? Because I think I am. So, with the scallion, that tunic is the skin. The same as any onion has that fine layer of skin right there. You're going to want to peel that off. That... See that? Now, don't be afraid, because like as you see, uh, it's a little cold outside for that guy. <coughs> You're going to want to get that out of there. Peel that right off before you even start chopping. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll show you. I don't need all of these. This is for the baked potatoes today, because we're going to need little baked potatoes and nice corn. So... Just getting this ready to go. I like to soak my stuff in water after it's done. So I'm thinking that's what we're gonna need for the baked potato. So now you see where like the uh, male enhancement pills would actually work here. You wanna just, uh, you know, just wanna bob it that. All you 90s kids will get that joke. And then what I do is a nice, nice boom wall, bias cut. My towel's in my way, but I'm tougher than that. From Northern New Hampshire, you think a towel sauce for me from cutting up an onion? I don't think so. So then what I'll do because I'll grab a little container. Wherever I have one right there, so that'll work just fine. Take that. Take that. That right in that container. Just a splash of water. Just enough to kind of get it moist. Then right in the fridge. And that will be just your garnish kind of deal for your uh, your stuff. Now the onion, like I said, we're going to have fun with this. I've gone over this a hundred times with you guys. So we're just going to do a cut, cut, cut off the tunic. Cut that fucking hat right off. That's, I keep trying to use that joke, but it's really not that funny. You're going to cut it in half. You're gonna cut it just like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And then boom, 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 boom. Now as you can see in my eyes, I'm giving you emotionally attached to this onion. So I have to end it. I have to end it with just a red onion. BAM! I never 
gets fucking old, man. It's awesome. So there we go. All your onions diced up. Throw those in a bowl. And then we're going to get into adding the meat. Um, I use ground beef and ground pork uh, with a few seasonings. Uh, I'm going to get those open and get those going for you. And uh, I'll show you how the mix works and all that good stuff. And the eggs and the binders. So last night, I got really drunk. And my wife, somehow, I don't remember this, talked me into using oatmeal instead of bread. And when I woke up this morning, she's like, we're still doing dinner time, right? I'm like, yeah, it's a little bit of the meatloaf. We got all the stuff ready to go. She's like, all right, remember, you're using oatmeal, not bread. And I'm like, who uses fucking oatmeal in a meatloaf? And she goes, you agreed with me last night. I says, I did? She goes, you did. So guess who's using oatmeal? Yes, dear. All right, we'll get back to the uh, meat part of this and mix it up. Stay tuned, it's almost dinner time. Where you guys been? Clearly you're all a bunch of line cooks waiting around for you for the last 30 minutes. I don't even know if the video is gonna end up being 30 minutes. All right, so get your ground pork. I bought this fresh at the local marketplace. I love that place, by the way. Um, good friend of mine works there. And uh, please, it's the hometown marketplace, man. Get great fresh stuff. Good stuff, man. So you're gonna combine your beef, your pork, your onions, okay? Now meatloaf is a really cool thing because uh, it's got a long history. Allegedly, it has been, it was invented in, um, officially in Pennsylvania, right around, in the, right around the 1870s, um, by Germans after inventing the beef grinder. Um, there's all kinds of stories, though. You read up on it, and it's the first cases were in Rome, but it wasn't exactly like the meatloaf we have today. But as far as history goes on the meatloaf, the meat loaf was invented in America. So it's a good American dish. So you're gonna break up your beef, mix it in a little bit. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick because they're gonna get greasy. You're gonna get you're gonna be greasy. But it ain't easy being greasy, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna I'm gonna wash my hands and then add my spices. So Again, like I said, that I, I did my research, and I was like, you know what, I don't want to make the same meatloaf I always make, the same boring meatloaf that you smother in ketchup or barbecue sauce. We are going to smother it in barbecue sauce because I made the barbecue sauce, but I want to do something a little bit different. So I did some more research, and come to find out, the French Canadians, they're them, they make the good meatloaf, you know what I mean, eh? Temple neck. So I did research on a Canadian, um, a French, <laughs> French Canadian recipe, kind of with the German recipe and mixing it in with the Swedish. And that's what I meant in the intro where it was like, this is going to be different than you guys know. So I'm starting out a little bit of basil, brand new. My wife went down the store for me this morning. Very nice of her to do. You guys should be commenting. Thank you, Amy, for taking care of us and him. So a little bit of basil. I really don't measure much. Like you guys know, I'll probably do, do a, a tablespoon, do two tablespoons. We're gonna go two tablespoons of basil. We're gonna go smoked paprika for that smoky flavor, that smoky paprika flavor. I don't have a lot left, that's probably a tablespoon. So we're gonna do the whole thing. Throw that away, put that on the grocery list. This is the French Canadian part. Poultry seasoning. They love using poultry seasoning on pork. I thought it was the weirdest thing in the world until I tried it. And I'm like, God damn, just like that meat pie we did. Same thing, same deal. So we'll add about the same, about two tablespoons of a uh, poultry seasoning. I'm 
going to go one tablespoon of oregano. One tablespoon. I'm going to go, it's about a tablespoon of garlic powder. I don't like to use garlic salt unless I absolutely have to. But that's up to you, man. This is your fucking meatloaf. This is mine. You guys don't even come over and visit me. I make you dinner. You don't show up to eat it, man. Whatever. More leftovers for me, right? Onion, onion powder. Well, we're going to do two tablespoons of that. And then, as always, we're going to do a tablespoon of mustard. Ground mustard, that is. I love mustard. I don't know what it is, but it gives that nice taste at the end. Nice aftertaste to it. Of course, old trusty, the old salt and pepper. You thought I was going to mix that now? No, nah, I don't mix it right now. We're going to do the binding element, man. This is just fucking cheeseburgers, dude, right now. It's almost dinner time, guys. Next up, the binding element. The binding element. What we're going to do is, I've never done this before. I'm not even going to lie to you. We're going to do eggs and oatmeal. So I'm going to guess three eggs, two pounds of beef, the amount of oatmeal I have. I'm just taking a guess at this. It's This is a 100% experiment. If I don't feel happy with the consistency, I'll change it. So this is what we do. Take three eggs. Crack. Some Kobe Bryant shit right there. Three eggs. Doing about two cups of oatmeal. Start with a cup. Again, we're experimenting right now. Whisper, now whisper good. Is that the same song? Okay, so your consistency right there. I don't like it. So I'm gonna add a little more oatmeal. Mix that right in there. Mix that right in there. I'm looking for like a peanut butter consistency to make sure it binds properly. So a little bit more. Oh yeah, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. It might end up being the two cups. Three eggs, two cups. There it is. So about a cup and a half of oatmeal. About a cup and a half of oatmeal, three eggs. And like I said, that peanut butter-like consistency. It's a good bind. Get that right in with your meats. Your onions. All your beautiful seasonings. Did I put in it? Because you never come over. Waiting for that joke to get old where people start showing up my house. And I'm like, dude, I didn't really want you to come over. And then you're going to hand mix this real nice. And you'll feel it binding together, man, you know. Get to the bottom, as I always say, when you mix. Toss. That smells amazing. And this is a new way that I'm doing it. Usually I use bread, you know, a couple... Slices of bread, egg yolk, mix it up just like I did with the uh, the oatmeal, and we're good to go. All right, so we're there, and we are about to have a loaf of meat, pork, and hamburg, and it's going to look about that size in your pan. So let's move on. It's almost dinner time. Let's do this. Hey guys, 
We're shaping our loaf of meat now. Anyway, let me take an interruption real quick, a commercial interruption. I'm in a band, as you know. We're called Between the Kid and the Goat. We have recorded one song in the studio, Living Room Sessions, right here in my own home. But don't worry, there's more. If you shoot over to our YouTube page, Between the Kid and the Goat, there's all kinds of videos and funny stuff over there. And wait, if you like, subscribe and ring the bell now, we guaranteed two free songs within the month. Back to dinner time. All right, so we're at the shaping of our loaf. So you're gonna take this out of your bowl and you're literally gonna shape it like a loaf, man, like a, a bread loaf. But you wanna make sure it's tight. You wanna make sure it's tight. Um, I oiled my pan. Uh, I used a paper towel, threw down some vegetable oil, kind of rubbed it. I know a lot of people are like, well, there's a lot of grease in the fat and burg and a lot of grease in the pork. Yeah, but I've also seen a burn. And picking, cleaning meat lo burnt meatloaf off the pan, uh, yeah, I just saved my marriage. Um, so what you're going to do, you're going to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. I just did that, so that was two times two equals four. Um, preheat it to 400 degrees. It is preheating right now. So what I'm going to do is, while we wait, oh, it just went off. It's unbelievable. It's almost as if the gods are with me. We're going to get our baked potatoes ready to go as well. So we're going to put them both in at the same time. They should come out right about the same time. With that, take the uh, vegetable oil again. You don't have to use vegetable oil. I use it because it's cheap. You can pick it up for like a buck twenty-nine. You take your potatoes. You're gonna hit it. About a cap full of oil. Woo woo woo. Here's another cap full of oil. Woo woo woo. And you're gonna rub it into the skin. You can clean yours off. You can do whatever you want to do with your fucking baked potato. But what this will do is it'll help it cook a little faster. Again, oil is a good condenser, good condenser of heat. Wash your hands after because they're nasty. So I'm gonna get my oven open. To get my meatloaf in, I'm going to uh, salt and pepper the top of my taters. A little salt on that skin is always good. So we're going to put the potatoes in. We're going to put our meatloaf in. Make sure it cooks even. And half an hour. We'll check on it. It's almost dinner time. So while we're waiting on this meatloaf, real simple meal, real cheap meal, figured I would take the time to tell you a joke. So we're going to bring the camera right over here, and you're looking at a penny. Do you see the car? Lincoln. Do you see the snake? Copperhead. Do you see the prostitute? Not for a penny, you won't. <laughs> Love that joke. Anyway, just figured out, I'm just gonna be hanging out waiting for this to cook off and then it's gonna be dinner time. I just figured to tell you a joke and just let you know one little thing. In a half an hour, when this is half cooked, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna throw some barbecue sauce of your choice. I hope you're using Wicked Pissa barbecue sauce. If you're not, comment below, I can get hold of you and sell you a bottle. I do everything. I don't think you've realized this yet. I do everything. 
and I'm gonna lather it down with the barbecue sauce. I'm gonna put it back in for another 30 minutes and we should be good to go on the baked potatoes and the meatloaf at the same time. Not getting fancy with veggie today, guys. I grabbed a cheap can of whole kernel corn. Nothing crazy today, guys. We're not doing nothing fancy. But it's your time to make it fancy. Valentine's Day is coming, single men. I'm trying to hook a brother up right now. You'll figure it out. All right, guys. It's almost dinner time. I'll see you in a little bit. Bam! Guys, pulling our meatloaf out, pulling our baked potatoes out. We did 30 minutes, 400 degrees, pulled it. I lathered it in barbecue sauce, as you can see. Uh, I, that's my homemade barbecue sauce. Again, if you need a bottle, let me know. Comment below. It's all good. We got our baked potatoes in there. Put those right on the counter there. Those are good to go. And then what we're going to do is I get some corn here. Then I did oregano, a little onion powder, and just a pinch of Cajun for a little tang aftertaste. A little, a little bust, you know what I mean? And like I said, I bought a can. I ain't taking the time to shuck shit in the middle of January. Well, now, isn't it February now? Oh, my God. So throw that in for like a minute, minute and a half, and you're good to go. And uh, it's dinner time. Right here, right now, I'm going to plate this shit. I'm sure Amy will uh, put pictures of the dish when it's plated in all these little Easter egg looking things and stuff. I know what you're up to, Amy. I know what you're up to. And uh, then we'll close it up. But it's dinner time, so eat that meatloaf, it's good! So that's what's left of my plate. It was amazing. Hands down the best meatloaf I've ever made and it was all experimental. As I explained to you earlier, I combined a bunch of different culture recipes, did my thing, and it was amazing. I hope that it was as amazing for you. I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. Nah, I've never had better. If you guys are into this show, I just want to give a, a shout out. I want to kind of give a plug for my boy, drummer of the band Between the Kid and the Goat that I talked about earlier. Uh, swing by, it's going to hurt. If you like um, the whole food thing, the history of the food, and that man is a madman. Jason Jason is literally does things with hot food that I would never even think of. And if you're 44 right now looking at that and going, oh, oh, oh that's not what I'm talking about. Anyway, so go over there, check out It's Gonna Hurt. We'll flash you the picture so you remember the name. And remember, like, subscribe, ring the fucking bell, lay down a comment, talk shit, do whatever you guys want. Eventually, I'll respond regardless. Um, also, remember to bounce over to Between the Kid and the Goat. That was supposed to be the cue for a flash picture of the logo with the name. Check them out. You just watched It's Dinner Time with Timmy J. And again, I hope it was as good for you as it was for me. Till next time, brothers, sisters. Love you guys. It's dinner time. Bye.